and welcome to the Exploring the Faith YouTube channel. This week, in the extraordinary form of the Mass, we celebrate the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, whereas in the ordinary form, we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Times. On the screen I include the readings for this week in both forms of the Latin Rite. And I think there's a lot of interesting similarities between the readings in the two forms of the Latin Rite Mass. In the ordinary form, we begin with a reading from the first book of Kings. According to the Bible, large portions of ancient Israelite society at the time of the prophet Elijah started to apostatize from the one true faith, rather choosing to defect to paganism and more specifically the worship of the ancient Canaanite god Baal. Elijah then went up to the pagan priests and challenged them to call upon their gods to perform a miracle. When they failed to do so, Elijah then calls upon the god of Israel, who performs a miracle in the sight of both the people and the pagan priests. In the aftermath of this, Elijah begins to be persecuted by the king of Israel, who had also defected to paganism, and Elijah thus had to go into hiding. In the first reading for this week, Elijah begins to fall into despair at his situation, even going as far as praying for death. An angel then appeared to him and told him to eat, and miraculously some food and a jug of water appeared before him. Elijah then fell asleep, but is awakened by the angel, who told him to eat and drink some more. And again, some food and drink miraculously appeared before him. He was then sent to Mount Horeb, a mountain in the Arabian Peninsula. Mount Horeb, in this reading, is called the Mountain of God, since in the Bible there are two different versions of the story of Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapters 19 and 20, it says that Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, but in Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 10, it says that Moses received the Ten Commandments upon Mount Horeb. The significant thing to focus in on here is the symbolism. God miraculously gave food to Elijah to strengthen him so that he could approach the mountain of God, that place where the Israelites had received the commandments of God. Mount Horeb thus symbolized a state of union with God in which we are aware of the will of God and have a perfect receptivity to it. The food which God gave to Elijah represents not just physical sustenance, but also the spiritual sustenance necessary to approach the spiritual mountain of God. All of this, of course, is a prophecy of Jesus. In John chapter 6, portions of which the Catholic Church has been reading in Mass for the past few weeks, Jesus describes himself as the bread of life. Jesus says in John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. That is, Jesus is the means by which the truth in its fullness is made known to us, and is the means by which reconciliation between us and God is brought about. Jesus, in his death, brought about both the forgiveness of sins as well as the defeat of death. It is thus on the basis of what Jesus did that God extends to us his grace, whereby we receive spiritual life. And it is because of Jesus' death and resurrection that the resurrection of the dead will occur in the end times. Jesus is thus the source of eternal life, in every conceivable sense of that word. Jesus can thus continue on to say in the readings for this week, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. And further, we receive, quote, the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. We rise to the mountain of God only because we are sustained by the bread of life, which is Jesus. While the bread of life refers to the person and mission of Jesus, 
it also refers to that whereby Jesus' presence to his people is continued or perpetuated, namely the Eucharist. Christ's presence in the Eucharist is one of the means, in fact it is the highest means, by which we are continually fed on our journey towards God. In it, we feel the effects of God's mercy and are given the strength to strive towards God. We see a similar theme in the extraordinary form of Mass, the readings for the traditional Latin Mass. In the reading taken from St. Paul, which for this week is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, St. Paul reminds the Christians of Corinth of the core of the Gospel message, namely the reality that we are saved by the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 7, which tells the story of Jesus traveling to the region near the Sea of Galilee, where he heals a man who was deaf and mute. There is a large amount of spiritual and moral significance to be found in the stories of Jesus' healings, but one of the most explicit is that it points towards the healing of human nature of the effects of sin and the fall. And one way in which we participate in the effects of Jesus' mission is through the reception of the Eucharist. It is for this reason that in the post-communion prayer for the extraordinary form, the priest says, Having received thy holy sacrament, we beseech thee, O Lord, that we may feel supported in soul and body, that being saved in both, we may glory in the fullness of the heavenly remedy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Through the reception of the Eucharist, human nature is healed and is drawn closer to the glorified state, in which we dwell with God in heaven. In light of the readings for this week, the healing of human nature and the glorification of human nature can be seen in terms of overcoming death and having eternal life with God in Christ. And this is the theme that unites the readings for both the ordinary and extraordinary forms. And this gives us something to reflect upon in the upcoming week. Thank you again for joining, and I hope you enjoyed. God bless.